안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And Auto GPT is absolutely insane. So today I would like to give you a tiny introduction to it and show you how you can run it on your own computer. AutoGPT is an open source software project that is blowing up on GitHub. It was created just a month ago and it's already in the top 100 GitHub repositories with the most stars. It was placed 55 the last time I checked. It already has more than 90,000 stars. It's already above the Rust programming language, Django, Tailwind, PyTorch, Spring Boot, and Bitcoin. I mean, look at that graph. Absolutely explosive growth. So, what is AutoGPT? I assume that by this point, we have all used ChatGPT at least once. With ChatGPT, we are all used to writing a prompt, asking a question, and receiving an answer. We then repeat this process one prompt at a time until we get what we want. It's like ping pong. The human is doing the ping and ChatGPT is doing the pong. What AutoGPT does is it removes the human from the ping pong table. It basically allows the GPT-4 model to write prompts to itself. All you have to do is give it a task and AutoGPT is going to come up with the steps and prompts required to accomplish the task all alone without human intervention. AutoGPT can autonomously achieve the goals you set for it. The reason it can do this is because AutoGPT is packed with many awesome features. It has internet access. It can search the web and gather information required to complete a task. Thanks to an integration with vector databases, it has both long-term and short-term memory. It uses GPT-4, the latest and most premium language model, when it needs to generate text. And it uses GPT-3, a not so expensive but faster language model, when it needs to summarize files or websites it found on the internet. It can Google by itself. It can control your browser. It can use DALI or Stable Diffusion if it needs to generate images. It can use the GitHub and Twitter API and more. It can also write code and run it by itself. And it can also speak its progress out loud using an AI voice service. It is an absolute beast. So let me show you how to get this bad boy running in your computer. I'm also gonna give you some tips on how to use it better so you don't waste time and money. So stick until the end of the video to find out. To run AutoGPT, you need to have Python 3.8 or later installed in your system, as well as VS Code and Git. If you don't have them, you can install them by downloading each one of them from their website. After you're done with the installation, open your console. On the terminal, drag and drop the documents folder and then run this command. This will bring the latest and stable version of AutoGPT code from GitHub into your computer. Then open VS Code, go to File, open Folder, and select the AutoGPT folder located on your documents. On VS Code, click View, then Terminal, and on that newly opened terminal, run this command. This will install all the packages required for AutoGPT to work. After that, look for the .env, that template, and duplicate it. On VS Code, just do right-click, copy, and then right-click, paste. Rename the newly created copy to just .env. And now it's time to get you some API keys. We first need an OpenAI key since AutoGPT uses both the GPT-4 and GPT-3. Go to your OpenAI account, API key section, and create a new API key. A paid account is required to complete this step, so you will need to enter your credit card information. Copy the API key you got from OpenAI, go to your .env file and set it as the value of the OpenAI key environment variable. Because we need the AI to be able to search using Google, we also need to get an API key from them. To do this, go to the Google Cloud Console and log in or create a new account if you don't already have one. From there, create a new project by clicking on the Select a Project dropdown at the top of the page and selecting New Project. Give your project a name and you are good to go. Now it's time to enable the Custom Search API. Head to the APIs and Services dashboard, click Enable APIs and Services and search for custom search API. Click on it and then click enable and you are all set. Next, you will need to get your API key. Go to the credentials page and click create credentials. Choose API key, copy the API key, go to the .env file on your VS Code and paste it on the Google API key variable. We're almost done, I promise. Next, go to the custom search engine page and click add. 
Set up a new custom search engine and select search the entire web. Then go to the overview page of your search engine and copy the search engine ID. Copy the ID, go to the .env file on your VS Code and paste it on the custom search engine ID environment variable. Unless you add a credit card to Google Cloud, you will get 100 searches for free per day. If you add one, you get 10,000. AutoGPT integrates with more services. You can also set up the API keys for GitHub, Twitter, AI voice services, stable diffusion, as well as the supported memory backend. If we don't configure any memory backend, such as Redis, Pinecone, and others, the memory will be saved locally on your computer. To use local memory, create a file called autogpt.json on the root of your project and you are good to go. We're done with the setup. Let's now use this thing. On your VS Code terminal, start AutoGPT by running this command. AutoGPT will welcome us and ask us to name our AI. In my case, I will go for Tour Guide AI. Then we have to give the AI a role. I will say that Tour Guide AI is an AI designed to research travel destinations and write travel brochures. After that, we have to write down the goals of our AI. I want the AI to write a travel brochure for Dubrovnik, a gorgeous Croatian town. The first goal would be research Dubrovnik as a travel destination. The second one, find things to do and places to eat. Third one, using the results, make a travel brochure for Dubrovnik. And the last goal, when you finish, terminate. Press enter twice and we are off to the races. As you can see, AutoGPT comes up with thoughts, reasoning, a plan, criticism and speak which is how AutoGPT tells us what it's going to do. Then it comes up with a command it wants to execute. It wants to run the Google command to search for Dubrovnik travel destination. When AutoGPT proposes a command, we always have the option to agree to it. We can say no, or we can provide extra feedback, which is something we're going to see a little bit later. After we say we agree, it searches Google and finds some websites, and it chooses Lonely Planet as the first website to browse. As you can see, it also came up with a plan. It will browse the website, save important information to files, and use the information it gathers to accomplish the task. On the criticism part, we can see it says it needs to be sure it's gathering information from reliable sources. Now it wants to run the browse website command. And after we accept it, it opens a browser goes to that website and extracts information from it. After the information is extracted, AutoGPT is now asking for authorization to start a new agent, like a minion, and it's giving it a task. How cool is that? It knows what prompts it needs, it knows how to write the prompts to get what it wants, and it's executing those prompts. Because by this point I am tired of having to approve every command, I instead write Y-50, which means that I'm authorizing the next 50 commands. This is a very useful setting, but it can be a little bit dangerous as we will see later. As time passes, we can see AutoGPT getting the answers it wants from its agents and using commands like write to file to take notes of what it's finding out. We let it do its thing and it's going to keep Googling, browsing and taking notes. We can see the files it has created and the notes it took on the AutoGPT workspace folder. And we can also take a look at the AutoGPT.json file to see the memory of the AI. This file contains the data the AI has found as text and text embeddings, which is how the AI can read its notes. Thanks to the memory of AutoGPT, we can kill the program and when we come back and start it later, we won't have to start from the beginning. It will instead ask us if we want to continue. So cool! Now I want to tell you about the feedback command because I found it very useful. As you can see here, it is asking me for permission to browse the Lonely Planet website. Instead of saying yes or no, I am telling it to not use Lonely Planet and use TripAdvisor instead. And sure enough, it listens to the feedback and decides to browse TripAdvisor instead. Incredible. After the brochure was ready, I asked it to put on a markdown file. And this is the output I got. It did pretty well. Right from the start, we can see it is actually written as a tourist brochure. It is recommending four things to do with their descriptions, and it's also recommending some places to eat, and it's describing them as well. It is also ending with, thank you for considering Dubrovnik as your next travel destination. We hope to see you soon. 
I hope you agree with me on thinking that AutoGPT is super cool. And now let me tell you what the not so good parts about AutoGPT are and the things you have to be careful about. The biggest thing is that it can be expensive to run. AutoGPT uses GPT-4 and GPT-3. GPT-3 is very cost efficient and fast and GPT-4 is better at reasoning and consciousness but it's more than 10 times more expensive than GPT-3. To save money you can run AutoGPT like this. This will use GPT-3 only so you will save a bit of money. As we saw before, it can be annoying to have to approve every single command AutoGPT wants to run. So we can pass a number like we saw before. Or if you really trust the machine, you can run AutoGPT on continuous mode. This will run AutoGPT without user authorization. 100% automated. This setting really isn't recommended because the AI might run commands that you would normally not allow. Instead of using the dash dash continuous, I would recommend to use the Y dash number command but don't go too high on the number because if you do that then you won't be able to give any feedback to the AI in between commands. You will need to use the feedback well especially when you are using AutoGPT to do research. Sometimes it just falls down on a rabbit hole and keeps googling and taking notes forever, researching more and more and more. If that happens you can use feedback and send something like no more googling, finish with the information you have. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that this project is an experiment and it makes mistakes so there will be cases where it might get stuck, it won't be able to correct itself, it might enter into an infinite loop and you will have to restart it. That will be fine but remember that you are paying every time that AutoGPT thinks of a command or evaluates an output or get your feedback. Even though we are talking cents on the dollar, those tiny costs will add up quickly. To avoid spending lots of money, go to your OpenAI settings and set a hard limit to cap and limit how much money your account is allowed to spend. I strongly recommend recommend you set limits before you start. Don't let the AI drain your credit card. Even though it is limited, even though it can be expensive and does not perform perfectly at all tasks, AutoGPT feels powerful. AI is at a moment like the computers were long ago, back when they were huge machines and they weren't that good. The difference is that unlike computers, AI is moving at an incredible speed. It's been a month since AutoGPT is out. Can you imagine where it would be in five years? years? Now is your turn in the comments to let me know what do you think about AutoGPT? Are you impressed or disappointed? Do you think it's cool? Is it too overhyped? Are you going to run it in your machine? I hope you found this video useful and if you did please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget that if you want to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter among many many others for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. Ono do, kamsa hago, sanan hago, dao me see you on the next one, bye bye.